We begin tonight with the very latest on Hurricane Milton's track with Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips. Dennis? Wendy, so when we look at the updates, the new tracks come out every six hours. So we just had one. We'll have another one at 5 a.m., 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. tomorrow. No changes to our warnings. We still have a hurricane warning in effect for the entire area. And that includes our inland counties. I don't want to forget that because we often talk about coastal areas, especially when we're talking surge. We always talk about coastal areas. But this storm, this hurricane is going to cut right across the state. And it's going to go very close to Orlando as well. So they are going to have hurricane conditions in Orlando. And I say that because there's a lot of people that are going to evacuate to Orlando. And you're still going to get some pretty nasty conditions there, not like Tampa, of course or wherever landfall occurs. And there's also that storm surge warning in effect as well along coastal areas. So let's look at the latest. Storm surge, this is always the real catastrophic area of damage because you simply cannot do anything about the water. You know, the wind can be more isolated. The wind can be scattered. But when this water comes in, there's not a thing you can do about it. And a surge of 10 to 15 feet. Now, this is worst case scenario. By definition, when the Hurricane Center sends out these numbers, these are the worst that they can be. And I think that makes sense. They kind of want to give everybody the look. All right, well, this is the bad, the worst it can be. So we can decide what we want to do based on that worst case scenario. It makes a lot of sense. Usually the numbers come down a little bit lower than this, but that is what you at least can plan on when you're making your decision on whether or not to evacuate or not, which a lot of places are under mandatory evacuations. So earlier on tonight, we had that pinhole eye wall. And then look, look right there. Got kind of cloudy right there. Now, what does that mean? It means it's weakening, but not really in the way that we want it to. Winds of 165, it's down to 165. It's moving east at nine. The pressure's up. 15 millibars in the last hour. That's huge. I mean, that is weakening. But what's happening is a second eye wall is forming. We call it an eye wall replacement cycle. And all that means is that the storm is expanding. It's getting a little bit bigger, which is not what we want. Now, the good news is it does weaken when that happens. And sometimes it never recovers. So that is a plus. But the other times it gets larger and it still redevelops its strength. So over the next 12 hours, we'll see how that plays out. In the next 18 to 24, it's going to start feeling the tug of a trough, a front off to our north. And this is the new track. Now I will tell you, looking at the Zero Z spaghetti models, and several of them have trended a little bit to the south. Well, look at the margin of error, the cone of uncertainty. It's all the way down to Fort Myers, and it's up to Levy County. So let's recap. Charlie. Ian, Irma, all of them went on the right side of that cone. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but what I'm saying is just don't fixate on the center line in terms of where the ultimate track is. But when it comes to the damage, you do focus on that center line because most of the damage in terms of the highest surge and the strongest winds will be right along that line. Now, whether that line is there or there or there or there, We'll have to wait and see. We all know there are wobbles, there are turns. It's just what happens with these systems. But my point is, with the wind damage, the majority of the strongest winds, and by then expected to be about 125, 120, will be within 5 to 10 miles of that center. Now, right now, hurricane winds only extend 30 miles out. It's still a small storm. We think by then, hurricane winds will might be 45 to 50. Other parts of the area will certainly get a lot of wind. But I'm telling you, right around that center line is where most of the wind is going to be. The rain, you know, anywhere from four to eight inches of rain. So by tomorrow night, we start to see hurricane gusts along the coast. And then as the eye comes through, we look for winds of 65 to 85 miles an hour. Yes, that is significant winds, much like what we had with Irma. But when we see 180 out there today and we hear Cat 4, Again, those numbers exist in a very small part of that storm. So talking about landfall, I think the same wind will be in a very small part of the storm. And most of us will get strong tropical storm 
to mid-size hurricane force winds. But unfortunately, there will be a few spots, and it might only be five miles wide, but there are going to be some spots that are going to get those severe winds. And that ultimately depends on where that eye crosses. So if you look at tomorrow afternoon, rather Wednesday afternoon, we start to see a little bit heavier wind coming in. Hurricane force winds start to come in around 8 o'clock tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Tomorrow will be fine. And then Wednesday night, Thursday morning, we begin to see this race across the state.